Hi all, welcome to the JavaScript Beginners Tutorial by Quadrafection. In this video, we are going to discuss frequently used methods to work with JavaScript objects. We have already concluded the JavaScript Beginners Tutorial before. Recently, while compiling all the existing small tutorials into a full-length JavaScript tutorial, I realized that this topic is important and without it, the discussion would be incomplete. So without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, we have this object here. It is having these properties. So here we have the first method, object.assign. It allows us to copy all enumerable on properties from one or more source object to a target object. For now, you could think of on properties as the properties that is directly added to the object. You can add properties from other objects also using inheritance. We'll discuss them later in JavaScript OOP concepts. For now, just think of this object here. Now, this is how we are going to call the method assign. The first argument of this method will be the target object, okay? Target. And then after that, you can pass the source object one by one. In order to illustrate this, along with the student object, let me add one more student here, student2, and let's change these values accordingly. Now currently we have two objects, student1 and student2. Now I'm going to assign this object, student1, into student2. Then let's call the method assign. Student2 is the target object and here we have the source object student1. Now let's print the second student here. See the values from these student1 properties is assigned to the student2 properties here. Now before explaining how this method is helpful, let's thoroughly understand how this method works. So in this operation here, student2 is the target and student1 is the source. And that's why student1 property values is assigned to the student2 property values. Now I'm going to add an extra property to the student1 object, which is email. See, newly added property is added to the target object. Now let me add an extra property to the uh, target object here. This property is not present inside the source object, which is hobbies. So here we have an array containing different hobbies. Now let's check the student2 object after the assign operation. So here we have the output and you can see the hobbies property unaffected by the assign operation. So the unique property of the target object will be unaffected even after this assign operation here. So that's how this method works. Now let's check the benefit of using this method. So let's clear these statements here. We don't need this student2 object anymore. Now consider we have an object called student2. And we are assigning this object student1 to it. As you know, these object literals are of the type reference type. When we assign a reference type variable to another variable internally somewhere inside the JavaScript engine, this object is saved somewhere and the same address will be mapped to both of these variables student1 initially and then by assigning this operation here, the same address is mapped to this variable student3. So we have a problem here. With this variable student3, if I update any of the values inside this object, let it be student id. I'll change that to 100. Now if you check the object student3, obviously you could see the updated value student id 100. Since both of these variables are referring to same object, if you check the student1 object, you could see the same change there also. See, it is because both of these variables are referring to a same single instance of this object in the memory. So there comes the first benefit of using this method object.assign. So instead of this direct assignment, here we are just declaring this variable student3 and here we are calling this method object.assign. Here we have the target student3 into it. We'll be copying this object student1. Now let's print the object here, student3. Now you could see this error cannot convert undefined or null into an object. In order to fix the error, I will initialize it with an empty object like this. Now you can see the output here. Here we have copied all the properties from the source object student1. In order to even simplify the statements here, we could do this. In place of this target object, just pass an empty object like this. Now after this statement here, both of these variables student1 and student3 are having two distinct objects in the memory. So modify one of the object property won't affect the other. For example, let's update this student1 student ID. 
let's change that to 99 see here we are printing the student 3 object and its student id is remain unchanged the update operation is only happened inside the student 1 object see that's it so this is the common way of copying objects in javascript now here we have the second benefit of using this method which is merging two or more objects let me comment this log statement here. Consider these two objects, obj1 and obj2. The first object is having these two properties a and b. And here we have the second object, obj2. And inside the second object, we have the properties b and c. In both of these objects, here we have a common property, which is b. Now I'm going to create a third object by combining both of these objects. So let's call the method assign as a target. We can pass an empty object and here we have the source object obj1, obj2. So these are the two source objects. So inside this object properties from both of these objects will be merged. Let's look what is happening here. See here we have the third object which is created as a result of combining both of these two objects here. Property A is having 1. Property B is present in both of these objects. So the later object in the collection of source object will override the previous object's properties. Inside the first object B is having 2 which is overwritten by the second object with the value 4 that you can see here. And this property is only present inside the second object. So here we have the resulting object with these property values. Now if you change the order here you could see b is getting the value from the first object here because of its order so that's how this method works object dot assign now let me tell you this here we are only discussing most important frequently used methods so pay attention closely you will definitely benefit from this session now before discussing the next method we want to get familiar with these iteration statements for in and for off so let's check them in action. Now consider this new object student having properties student ID, name and email. Now let's check how for in statement works over this object. So here we have the syntax for then a pair of parentheses inside that we have an iteration variable. Let it be key because we are going to iterate over the keys of this object here. So let key in the object student and here we are going to have a block of statement to be executed in each iteration. For now, let's print this iteration variable key. See, here we have the name of the properties in this object here, student. Now, if you want to see the corresponding key value along with the key here, you could do this concatenation here, student. Inside that, we can use this key here. Now, let's separate them with a colon like this. So, that's how this for in statement works. Now, you could use the same statement for other object types like arrays. Let's use this for in statement for an array. Let key in the array. I will directly pass the array here. Inside this block of statement, we only have one statement. So I will just ignore this block here. And let's print the iteration variable key. See here we have the output. In case of an array, its key will be its index, array index. So this is how for in statement works. It allows us to iterate over the key names in the object. So this is for in statement. Now let's talk about for of statement. As per the definition itself, it creates a loop over iterable objects. Since these object literals are not iterable, we can't use the statement for of on these object literals on them. Let's check what happens if we execute this statement over the object literal. So here we have the iteration variable. Let it be item of student and here we have the block of statement you see here we have the error student is not iterable now instead of this object literal let's pass the array here inside the iteration let's print the iteration variable item as you can see it is printing the values inside the object that we have here two three four you could use the same statement over string also because characters inside them is treated as an iterable thing in javascript so in each iteration, it is retrieving character by character from this string. So that's all about for in and for of statement. Let me comment both of them. Now let's discuss the next method 
object keys. It is similar to this for in statement here, but instead of iteration, it is returning an iterable array containing name of these properties here. It is more helpful when we have a custom requirement rather than just looping over them. Let me elaborate. So we could do this object dot keys inside the method. We just need to pass the object student. So this will return an array containing the names of the keys inside the object. In order to see them, let's wrap them with the log statement. So here we have the array containing the key or property names. Now you can play with them however you want. If you want to iterate through the keys like we have done here, we could do this. Basically it returns an array. On that we are going to execute this for each loop. Inside that we have the arrow expression and inside that I will just print the key. So here we have the keys. You can append the corresponding key value like we have done with the for in statement. Now suppose you have a custom requirement that you need to show all these key value pair in a sort order. Just before this for each loop, you just need to call the sort function here. That's it. See, the keys are in sorted order. So that's the advantage of using this keys method. Now here we have the last method object values now from the name itself you could say the difference between them here we are iterating over the collection of values inside the object so we are going to discuss about object dot values now before getting into that let me tell you this this method keys can be used for other data types object data types like we have discussed or shown with the for in statement here it can be used for arrays also, but for arrays, the keys, corresponding keys will be indices itself. So most commonly, uh, iterating through the indices of an array is not helpful. Most often, we use this method over objects and object literals. Now let's move to the object values method. So here we go, object.values method can be called. Inside that, we can pass the object. So this will return the values inside the object here in each properties. Since we have an array here, we can use the for each. Here we have the arrow expression with the parameter value. So then let's print the value. So that's it. Here we have the values from the corresponding properties as you can see here. In order to distinguish them from each other, let me have this log statement with some separation. So the method values returns an array containing the property values. Now let me show you a practical example where you can benefit from this uh, method values. So that I will just comment this object keys method. Now into this object, I'm gonna add one more property marks containing marks earned in different subjects. Now let's say you want to find the total marks earned by the student. First of all, let me comment this uh, values statement. So here we go object.values inside that we can pass the student so it will return the values of these properties just to confirm the same let's print them again so here we have the array returning the values from the object here so this is the value from student id property then name email and here we have the value inside this property marks now instead of calling this values method over the student if we call this method over this marks property here here we get an array containing the values inside the object here so actually this is representing an array containing all the marks earned by the student now it becomes very simple we just need to iterate through the array and just add them one by one if you are not familiar with the array method reduce we'll be having an outside variable sum and we are going to iterate the array with the for each loop here we have the um, arrow expression on each iteration we will add the mark into the variable sum at the end we will get the total mark see that's it now you can even simplify this with the compound assignment now like i mentioned if you know the array method reduce you could do this reduce inside that we have an arrow function with these two parameters accumulator and current we have already discussed this array method before so we just need to do this return and accumulator is getting added with the current element and you could initialize the accumulator here with zero so on each iteration the mark is getting added to the accumulator and it will be saved again into the accumulator after going through each element at the end the value of the accumulator will be returned and we can save that into the sum so that's it since we are adding 
few integers here we can even skip initializing the accumulator so that's all for this video in next video we have discussed what should we learn after the javascript basics if you found this video helpful please consider subscribing to this channel code of fiction if you haven't yet please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can also benefit from this have a nice day bye